though to Winford and Fermlin, who could at least welcome back Scott Thompson. Donnelly, Shields, Derek Young and Byrne all still missing. The loss of Brent Sancho saw Lee Wilkie return to the Dundee lineup for the first time in almost a year. Striker Steve Lovell didn't make it for a side that had lost three goals in each of the last two away games. And Fermlin were looking for some home comforts for the new year, having given their own fans just three victories at East End Park all season. Dundee had picked up just five points on the road. The imminent return of Stevie Crawford to Scottish football will be of no consolation to Dunfermline fans. We are still looking for the man who would fill his shoes. Andy Todd knows he won't be that man, even though the emergency striker had scored his side's last two goals. And after 13 minutes here, Todd was in hand to put the powers ahead. Todd's goal taking him level with Craig Brewster as the club's top scorer with five for the season. Jim Duffy would be unhappy with the side's inability to defend crosses, while Dan Fairman were more than happy to look at the wider view. Down the flanks bringing a reward, and although Todd was credited with his club's second goal, the credit does have to go to the unfortunate Stephen McNally. Muted celebrations from Todd, who was honest enough to admit he hadn't touched the ball. McNally, under severe pressure, unable to clear these lines. Only the fourth time this season Dunfermline had scored more than one goal in a league game. The ever-present danger of Todd almost ensuring a third arrived. Jim Duffy will need as many battling performances as he can get from his men in 2005 and there might well have been a quiet smile of satisfaction from the Dundee manager as his men hit back to Neil Barrett. Barrett scored the winner against Aberdeen a couple of weeks ago, a result that underlined the potential of this side as did the 2-2 draw with Celtic. However, past glories present little basis for future and indeed present form. The form man of the present for Dunferman was Todd. His second delivered a knockout blow to Dundee's hopes in this game. It wouldn't have taken an eagle-eyed view for Jim Duffy to recognise the problems. A free header, Dundee's head swimming from a seasonal taste of hot toddy. Tight as it is at the bottom, only one way for Jim Duffy's men to go now. Their battling qualities will be put to the test in the coming weeks. An interesting ending was denied by the thickness of the post. Mark Fotheringham almost finding a way back for his side. When Fermlin not only held out, they might have added to the lead. Derek Suter kept out Thomas Butler. But whoever comes in to fill the striker's role over the transfer window, they'll know they'll have to find the net because Dunferman have, and Andy Todd, a very able deputy. It was altogether more straightforward for Dunferman in their derby with East Fife. So much so, the Pars found themselves in front after 36 seconds, thanks to Andy Todd's header. But there was no panic from Jim Moffat or his third division side. And it was well into the second half before Dunferman scored again. Nice goal too. Barry Nicholson's cross landing perfectly at the feet of Noel Hunt, who seemed pretty pleased with himself. The home side knew they were through after that and could relax a little. Gary Dempsey had already hit the woodwork and scored Dunferman's third with just over 20 minutes left prompting the Dempsey dance of delight at the prospect of Celtic at home in the next round. Dunfermline were worthy winners, but no one at East End Park begrudged East Fife a goal for their efforts. It came right at the end from the head of substitute Les Bile. 3-1 to Dunfermline then, and it's Martin O'Neill's men who will come visiting on cup duty next month. Press before a two-game suspension. For Stevie Crawford to return to the old gaff, for United, the hope that his presence might inspire them to victory. Ian McCall, notebook in hand as he looked for a first away win of the season. United have shown signs of life over the last few weeks and adapted pretty well to the surface. Well enough for Robson to have Derek Stilly worried. It's fair to say that Fermlin has struggled to score goals in recent weeks and even when he put the ball past the keeper, Gary Mason suffered cruel misfortune. And there's really not much a manager can do when luck is not on his side. With Crawford now at United and Craig Brewster at Inverness, Davy Hay has brought in Jesper Christensen as a possible replacement. He'll have to prove his fitness in the next month, but as he demonstrated, there's nothing wrong with his ability, helped by some shocking defending. Tony Bullock no doubt relieved that a corner was all that was conceded. This was a free-flowing game of chances at either end. Noel Hunt grabbing this opportunity by the scruff of the neck. And he brought out the best in Bullock. Hunt looking for his second goal. 
in as many games. The reprieve for the United defence was a temporary one. As the corner was played back in, Scott Thompson set up the opportunity. And after it all got a wee bit messy, Christensen's emphatic finish gave Dunfermline the lead. Tony Bullock might have taken more charge in his six-yard box. He paid the price for standing back. A first goal for the Dane in Scottish football. A second goal for Dunfermline almost came through Thompson. The defender on the line doing what all defenders on the line should do, standing firm. Some neat and pretty football from Dunfermline saw Christensen again involved. No evidence of a dodgy knee as he eluded his marker and in the end Noel Hunt will feel he should have done better. On target at least and make the keeper do the work. Now we all knew it would happen, it was simply a matter of when. Stevie Crawford against Dunfermline, of course he was going to score. Helped by a slip from Stilly, biting the hand that used to feed him. United will need more from Crawford to escape from trouble. Injury ruled out Scott Wilson from the Dunfermline side, but striker Billy Mehmet had recovered from a foot injury to return up front for Davy Hayes' men. Plenty of injury worries for Jimmy Calderwood, quite apart from his own foot and mouth problem. Sander Diamond came back into his usual defensive role. Both managers looking to do their talking on the much talked about pitch at East End Park. Both teams emboldened by a cause. Dunfermline probably more so, as was evident in their play. By Nicholson's tenacity setting up a chance for Noel Hunt, which he probably should have taken. Ryan Essen given a chance to save he really shouldn't have had and the Aberdeen defence had to hold firm from Scott Thompson. Jimmy's displeasure pretty obvious, but from Richie Burns' misplaced cross, John Stewart and Darren Mackey almost became carpetbaggers for the Dons. Aberdeen was out to win in seven league games before this one, but still capable of cutting defences open. Kevin McNaughton forced too far wide in the end, allowing Derek Stilley the chance to save. Darren Mackey had scored the last four goals for the Dons, spread over five games, a sequence that was almost broken by Jamie Winter. Stilley at his best to keep it out. Like Aberdeen, Dunfermline have been struggling to win games of late and you can only wonder why they can't do the likes of this more often. Yes, for Christensen thrilling the home crowd. He already looks a good acquisition and provided the best bed for a home goal before the interval. Essen was to be at full stretch to keep him out. Billy Mehmet came close to giving the Powers the lead after the restart. Plenty of promise at least about this Dunfermline performance. Promise that was fulfilled by Mehmet just five minutes later. And the celebrations perhaps more elaborate than strictly necessary. It was nevertheless a fine turn and shot. It might easily have been 2-0 for the home side. It would have been but for Essen. Nicholson on the charge. Essen to the rescue. Hunt out of luck once more. And her missus came back to Hauntston Fairman when Xander Diamond bundled the ball into the net for the equaliser. Again, the celebrations signifying the underlying currents of this particular fixture. Diamond well placed to take advantage of close range. Anyone's game now. For Richie Byrne, the afternoon was about to take a dramatic turn for the worst. Against his former side, he had been the target of the Dunfermline fans, and his challenge on Simon Donnelly was branded amateurish by his own manager. Donnelly kept a cool head to steer the ball home for the winner, and then milked it for all it was worth. Donnelly finishing off a game that exceeded its billing because of its build-up. <laughs> 